Hey, this is Calvin Waite. I trade crypto for a living. I'm not a registered or licensed financial advisor, planner, or broker, so nothing on this channel should be uh, taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. I also trade all of these things, so I probably have a vested interest in there. Um, but there's plenty of entertainment value and lots of education, so this will be awesome. For those of you who didn't know, my uh, subscription channel is live. So look at the link in the description over at cryptoinfluencers.com and you can see how I make all of my trades and what I do and what I think about everything. This channel is for uh, more hypothetical and looking at trends and the other one is for actual trading. So you might be interested in that. Hey everybody, <clears throat> here we are on a Thursday. Uh, things are Things are looking pretty good. I thought I'd uh, take a minute here. This is this is kind of a fun uh, thing. I, I I've been you know I have been using this uh, AI predictor pretty pretty heavily, and I thought it might be fun to kind of see why I think it's relevant and why I think it's um, giving us a decent look at the information that we have. And so uh, this is this is as of yesterday's close. So we've just dipped down a little bit, and the AI was sort of predicting that that we were we were we've kind of had a shelf here, and then we've kind of we're going to pull back a little bit, and then find support at this higher level, and then we're going to slowly climb up. Well, uh, where does all this information come from, and is it relevant? So that's the that's the question we're going to try to answer today. So I'm going to uh, pull up the current. Uh, I, I know I've got some lines and things uh, on here, but I tried to clean it up as best I could. And <clears throat> I also included the most recent data point. Like this is the best data point. The variance is only 11% uh, or 11.5% uh, from May, or excuse me, September. I don't know why I keep saying May. <laughs> September 12th of 2015, which is exactly this day right here. So. Uh, I'm going to move my face so you can see. There we go. And <clears throat> let's dig in and take a look at what is happening behind the scenes. So this is yesterday's close. So this is the day we're, we're comparing all of our information against. And then this is the day that the AI found that matches the closest in the history of Bitcoin's uh, trading. <clears throat> and what happened is we can look back now, and I've labeled everything so you can see. Uh, if you took yesterday's close uh, and compared it to the day before, uh, the day before we dropped 1.48%. Um, in September of 2015, uh, we dropped 2.17 percent. So there's a little bit of variance, but you can tell that it's fairly close, right? Uh, the next day's uh, drop from this close was only 7.78 uh, percent, and then here it was 1.62 percent. So you can see that there's a, a slight bit more variance, 0.9 percent variance between these two data points. Um, dropping one and a half percent roughly and 1.6 this is pretty close so we're looking at the close versus the close here since this scale is so tight it's hard to see this little difference um, here you can see a little bit stronger because um, there's a little bit more more room here but from a percentage standpoint we've dropped from this top down to this bottom here and it was 1.6% and the bottom of this red candle to the bottom of this is 1.49%. And then we move, we move on to the top of this. This dropped 1.51%. This one dropped 2.25%. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to see because of the scale. But when you put numbers on it, it helps you see. So the variance here, we went up 2.4% from this close up to the, the close we had here. And here, the top of this candle was 1.85% to move up. And then uh, there's some funky optical illusions going on. So even though this is supposedly lined up, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily look like it. 
So, um, but yeah, 1.4 from this point and 2.3. So we've got a full percentage point of variance here. And then from this close, uh, 1.64. And um, here from this close, it was 1.05. So there's a there's a one percent gain from that point, and then we see the biggest jump. So if we go back in history, um, this one this data point lost eleven point four two percent going to this close, and here we dropped further. So this out of our eleven and a half percent variance, this data point shows the the largest difference because we've got 16.7% drop from here to here, and the variance here is a five, almost, yeah, about 5%, more than 5%. And so this makes up almost half of our 11.5% uh, variance. And then you finally get our last data point. We dropped 13% from this date back here. And over here, it's showing that we dropped 1477 So if you add up the difference between each of these data points, that is where I'm getting this 11% variance. And the interesting thing is I've got these nine, nine data points that I'm using. You can see that it's more heavily weighted in the most recent past. And then um, I'm, I'm still grabbing data points in the past because, you know, we need, we need to see where we've come from. And sometimes this makes up the, the bulk of our, of our variance. So it's really, you know, when we overlay these nine data points on every other data point in the entire history of Bitcoin, it just turns out that this close matches closest with yesterday's close. So that is what is happening behind the scenes. And if Bitcoin follows a similar pattern and, and follows this same thing, and, and it's kind of amazing because you feel like you know, there's a lot of data out there for Bitcoin, right? We've been trading for a full decade now. And to have data points that line up so closely, it's very, very difficult to find anything with a variance below 15%. We only have a couple of, of options here. But um, we have 10 data points that are below a 20% variance, but you can see how some of these variances can get pretty far off. So that's why I'm looking for these really tight ones um, to sort of use and, and kind of believe a little bit closer. But in the history of Bitcoin, every, every situation where we were trading up high had a significant loss, showed some decent stability, um, that, we, that we did climb up to a higher level. All three of these um, data points, and I'll, I'll point to these ones, all three of these data points uh, were lower than yesterday's close. You can see that there's the the in the data we're seeing an increase in momentum. We're heading upwards, and then uh, here these are all all these four points are negative, so we're actually decreasing from here, and same down here. All of these are are pushing down, so the pattern is the same, and it's it's sometimes hard to see you know from the naked eye. Just you know if you compare these two charts, they don't look a ton. You know, they don't look super similar at first glance, but when you kind of look in and see the data points and look at them from a percentage basis, you can kind of see how things are, are going. So we have a little bit of a, a rise here, rise here. We've got um, uh, lower prices down here where we've consolidated, consolidated at a lower price. And then we've had a decent drop. You know, the drops don't look exactly the same, but from a percentage standpoint, We've dropped significantly, and and we not only dropped, um, you know, before this, before the FTX thing, but even way in the past, we were trading at a much higher level, and so those data points are important to to give us information on where we are and where we might be headed. Well, with all of that under uh, our belts, we are looking at this sort of an outcome. So. Um, every day when we get a new data point, it's, it's very heavily weighted. So today we're, uh, based on this historical data, we're seeing that we did drop off one more day. We flattened out, we had a little rise, we dropped back down, and then from there on we started building momentum. So about 10 days from now, a 
according to this pattern that we've discovered, uh, we should start increasing in momentum. Well, today's data point is green. So that means at the end of day, uh, well, I mean, it, it might be green. <laughs> we still have um, six hours to go. <clears throat> but if this data point is green, suddenly there's a little variance because right now we are up 0.66% where the next day's data point went down 2.18%. So if this is a difference of 3% on the variance, um, there might be a, a better data point to, to go from. But all in all, you can kind of see that we are we are uncovering uh, the future one day at a time, and that information feeds into uh, scenarios that we may have occur that we may have seen in the past. You know, this this particular data data set shows that we're we're finding stability and um, kind of uh, gaining a little bit of momentum, a little bit of strength here. And then after this consolidation, we're on our way. And that's pretty encouraging. And I feel like it makes sense from a technical analysis standpoint as well. You have a long drop. And when you see consolidation and a, and a, a slight show of strength, um, it kind of tells a trader that a lot of that downward fear, a lot of the threats of, of dropping further have kind of been absorbed by this consolidation. We're having an indecision type of thing where bulls and bears are both pushing at the, at the same distance or at the same strength. And when that happens after the bears have had control, uh, this consolidation means that the bears have less control and the bulls have more control. And especially once we start moving up into a higher range, um, it's perfectly healthy for us to pull back a little bit um, just to establish a higher level of, of support because right now we're showing a lower resistance. We pull back and show higher support than this support level. Uh, now, we've, now we've established even more support and that's exactly what played out in the past. Will we, will we go crazy like this? I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> but um, from the nine, from the ten data points that we've seen, you can see how a month from now we're we're decently higher. You know, seven, six, seven percent on average. I guess it's six and a half percent is the average. Thirty-four days from now, but you get out fifty-five days, and all of our data points are showing a significant increase. So if this plays out, if it if it plays out, <clears throat> then we are looking at a pretty decent move. Um, if I take the average of everything, this is what our chart looks like. So we're in the middle of our pullback. We're going to gain up a little strength, um, and then we're on our way. So this is just pulling everything together. <clears throat> but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of why I look at it, and I and I feel like it does uncover uh, a specific trend, and it pulls in things that we have seen in the past, and it also makes sense from a technical standpoint. The only thing that would really change this is um, something just un unknown. You know, any 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 known data that kind of just shows up and throws things off, but then that will feed into other scenarios and we'll look at the possible outcomes. So anyway, this this stuff's really fascinating to me, and it's very <laughs> it's it's interesting to see. You know, when you think about the psychology behind technical trading. Um, almost every technical trader is looking at historical uh, things they've seen in the past and how it will come out in the future. And I think it's interesting. I follow a couple of people on Twitter that love to put charts out and they look at different indicators and different things. And all they're doing is they're looking for, you know, points in the past when B when Bitcoin behaved a certain way under similar conditions, and they project out that that it'll behave the same. And that's exactly what this AI does, except for it just does it a little bit more scientifically. So anyway, just something fun to talk about on a day where, you know, things are, there's really, I, I don't expect a lot of moves in Bitcoin for probably about 10 days. But um, I also feel like this is perfectly healthy and we're building up some momentum. So we'll see how things go uh, as, we, as we add data, data points uh, day by day. But this has been our most liked scenario for a long time.
it is interesting how we have followed this pattern so closely. So uh, when, you're, when you follow the same pattern and you can pick out the same data uh, multiple times in a row, that's pretty impressive. Because if, if something really off happened, this would no longer be the, the closest scenario. It would be something else. But this scenario has popped up over and over and over, and we've literally tracked it as we've gone up. And now as we're retreating, we're doing exactly the same thing. So um, I'm just crossing my fingers that we go ahead and do this little little gem. I would not mind to see Bitcoin <laughs> move up into a, a significantly higher range. And, uh, you know, it's on the table. It's on the table. All right, you guys, enjoy your Thursday. Uh, we'll catch in with you tomorrow. Thanks for making it to the end of my video. Uh, make sure you keep those trades small. Uh, don't force a trade. Don't get impatient. And uh, if you want to see how all this works, please come over and check me out on the subscription channel at CryptoInfluencers.com. Again, the link is in the description.